Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be listening to interview experience for Oracle's application engineer position. We have Sachin with us, who is pursuing his master's in computer science engineering from Bits Pilani. So let's hear it from him. Hi, I'm Sachin. I'm from the MECS batch of 2019. Um, so I've been selected for this company called Oracle. So it, it was probably the fourth company that came for CS. And uh, I was selected for the application engineer profile. There were two profiles that came up. One was for server engineer and the other one is for application engineer. Uh, we initially had a simple uh, uh, mock-up round in which uh, they just uh, went through, a, they just gave an overview about the company. Uh, and uh, I, I don't think much was uh, covered regarding the uh, package and the CTC and stuff. It was just an overview of the, And the CG cutoff was, uh, uh, actually it was 7.5, but then due to the pandemic, there was a pandemic in 2019. Due to the pandemic, uh, they, uh, Due to the pandemic, they kind of cut short the uh, cutoff to around seven, and so I got through. So the recruitment process consisted of five rounds. Uh, the first round was an MCQ round, uh, followed by four uh, interview rounds. Uh, so in the MCQ round, we were asked. Uh, there were there were like four sections. Uh, there was a general aptitude section. Uh, then there was one about English proficiency, that was basically a comprehensive and stuff. And uh, there was one regarding uh, this general OOPS and database, and then there was an algo kind of round in the MCQ itself. So uh, you could attempt any section in any order, but one session, you definitely have to finish it inside a time bound that the uh, given us. I would say the difficulty of the questions with respect to APTI were very simple. It was just the time constraint that made things challenging. Uh, with respect to OOPS and database, it, they were very general. Uh, English proficiency, it's known. You just have to read through the comprehension and answer things. Uh, apart from that, I I don't think there was any negative marking as such, but they didn't post that there is uh, any marking scheme as such. So we were just told to attempt the questions. Uh, there was no instruction uh, which was said uh, saying that Okay, so the thing is you couldn't like jump to any question in this. As in, say, suppose you're attending the first question and you want to attend the 10th question all of a sudden, you just can't do that. You have to go next, next, next. And that made me believe that probably I cannot attempt the previous question once it's done, but that was not the case. So say, suppose there were 10 questions in that particular subsection. And after I attempted the 10th question, all the questions that were left out were coming up again. They were, they were like rolling over again. So I could attempt those afterwards. This was something that I realized like midway through the test. So I guess what's done was done. Uh, anyway, I would say from my experience from similar kind of tests, I would say accuracy is something that matters more than uh, the total number of questions you have attempted and getting correct. So it's like uh, out of the questions that you have attempted, how many were right also plays an equally, equally good role when compared to how many questions you got right in total. And yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it for the first round. Uh, I think after about two days, we were uh, they started off with the interviews. And um, we had, I had three technical interviews and then there was one HR round. I would say two technical interviews plus one managerial technical plus one HR round. But anyways, uh, the first round was uh, was mainly related to uh, array topics. So I, I, so the first question, the first question that they asked was regarding merging intervals. As in, say suppose you are given uh, an array and you are, and say suppose you are given a pair of uh, elements in the arrays, and say suppose you have an element saying two four and uh, maybe three six. So what you have to essentially do is you have to merge both of them and give the output as two six because three comes in between two and four. Anyways, that was the first question that I was asked. And the question that I was asked was uh, something I don't remember, but it was something re regarding one-dimensional array 
or else hash maps. I didn't quite get the optimal solution for the second second one, but uh, the discussion was in this regard. So that was for, that was first technical round. Uh, the second technical round was um, it was more of a mix. So uh, I was uh, asked a difference between uh, what uh, the difference between a modem and a router. And uh, there was a heated debate about that, but then uh, once I got through that, uh, we went uh, through the through what kind of technology I would use to just uh, kind of deploy a website, as in uh, what I use for the back end versus the front end. So basically, the full stack overview of what uh, technology I can explore. And right after that, I was asked uh, two other questions. Uh, one was uh, regarding regular expressions. So as in this gave uh, one string and one other string, which is a regular expression. And I just had need to like match it with this to the first one. Uh, it was not a complete regex question. It was uh, like, it, it just had one wildcard character, which I could match. Uh, anyways, I'll share the questions uh, with you guys also. Uh, the next one was regarding matrix rotation. So basically I had to uh, get the transpose of a matrix, you can say. And with that, uh, that more or less includes the second technical round. The third technical round was uh, a rather, rather simpler one when compared to the other two. So I, just, I was just given a, a 2D matrix and I was uh, asked to find if for each uh, particular element in, in the row or column, for each particular element, if all the other elements in the same uh, horizontal line or vertical line or the cross diagonals is all ones. And if that is the case, then you can return true or false. So that, that was a very simple question. I think he was uh, more, uh, he was looking forward to the way I would explain the answer to him in the third round, I guess. But anyway, those were the three technical rounds. The HR round was a breeze. So they just uh, asked me my location preferences and uh, maybe my extracurricular activities are good, but that's pretty much it. Okay, so uh, this time I wanted to keep things different from my previous experiences during my BTEC time. Because during the BTEC time, I was more like, uh, so I was more like company oriented. So this time I wanted to change things up a bit because uh, I wanted to uh, get things done in a more systematic manner so that if a company comes in later in the process, I definitely wanted to get through in that company at least. So I, um, also with this same idea of going in a systematic manner, I first started off uh, doing DP problems. So there was uh, there's this beginners at Codos contest. Uh, I would I would share the links with you guys. But this is because at Codos contest, I uh, started doing those questions. There were there are, there are kind of like 26 questions in that. I did about 15 of them, and then uh, I just realized that it was killing a lot of my time. And I just wanted to switch to the systematic approach that I was talking about. So in the systematic approach, before I went to a systematic approach, I realized that uh, I was not kind of like uh, uh, getting to solve the simple questions. As in, uh, whenever I see a question that's relatively simple, the solution to the problem was not the first thought that came into my mind. I used, like, I think I just got used to thinking of it in a complex way that I would unnecessarily complicate the problem and then uh, wind up not getting the easier solution. So I thought it's a, it would be a good idea for me to like run through my basics once and then uh, go ahead and solve some simple questions and then go back to complex questions. Because at the end of the day, it's like, if you don't solve simple questions and someone else solves simple questions, they'll be getting through. So because in most of the tests, if they're asking three questions, uh, probably two of them would be simple or something that you have seen and probably the third one would be a difficult one. And if you are able to solve the third one, but just don't have any, no idea about the first two, you will probably not be that well off in the race. Anyways, uh, so most of the people uh, in this at this time would probably suggest you to go through Geeks for Geeks. Uh, I diverge from that. Uh, so there is this uh, book called Data Structures and Algorithms Made Easy by Narasimha Karangala. I'm sure my friends will share the links with you. So I went through that book first. I uh, went through it for about uh, 
seven days, good seven to eight days. I covered uh, most of the book. I would say three fourths of the book. And then uh, uh, right after, uh, like right after that, I started doing uh, interview bit problems. Like I was kind of doing it parallel. Uh, so in interview bit, I kind of uh, made a priority list as in what kind of topics I want to cover first, and then go for the other ones. So based on my interview experience and my uh, the way I was attempting questions previously, I came down with a kind of uh, question uh, topic based priority, and based on that, I started uh, doing question and interview bit. So for those of you guys who don't, who have not started using interview bit, it's a platform where you have topics, or you have your coding questions segregated with respect to topics and with respect to each company that has come into like giving in that particular topic. I was not, I was not more concerned about the company as such. Topics was my interest. Once that was done, uh, I then moved on to Geeks for Geeks. In Geeks for Geeks, I just went through the OOPs and database concepts and OS concepts. I didn't uh, particularly do the must do coding questions, which many people suggest, because uh, at this stage, I kind of realized that most of the must do coding questions were covered. So I didn't uh, take the time to go through them separately. So anyways, the, that's what I would suggest and um, all the best guys. <laughs>